Today I am here in the practice room of Milan Recording Studios with a very new acquisition that we've just made for the studio. This is a Musser M75 um, vibraphone, and there's a number of cool things about the vibraphone as well as this particular vibraphone. So let's start off with the details about this particular instrument. Believe it or not, this instrument is actually about 20 years old, but you'd never really look, you'd never really know that by looking at it. Uh, when you look at it, it just it looks perfect. There's no major kind of flaws with it whatsoever. There's a few small nicks here and there, but overall, it's in excellent condition. The largest flaw with the instrument is that the small rubber grommets used to help isolate the bars from the metal posts that their string runs through is they're actually they've kind of gotten hard and they've cracked with age, and it looks like that one there is missing, and uh, that might be causing this buzz I've been hearing with it just lately, and. Um, uh, so we're working on getting a new set of these small rubber grommets, but that's really the only thing wrong with it, with the instrument, and it's really not a major thing. It's a very easy fix. You, you take off the, uh, the bars, you put the new grommets on, and then you're good to go. So you might be wondering, what is a vibraphone? To you, it might look like a xylophone or a marimba, and actually all three of those are completely separate instruments. They're very similar, both in shape and the way you play them, but there actually is a considerable differences between all three of them. And in the future, I'm going to be making a video about the differences between marimbas, xylophones, and vibraphones. And if you think that's going to be interesting, stay tuned. But I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of what the vibraphone sounds like. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit about it. The vibraphone is very similar to a marimba, but it has metal bars instead of wooden ones. And so that makes the uh, vibraphone sound like this. But of course, you have a damper pedal that you can use to lower this piece of felt off of the bars, and that, of course, would make the sound sustain and really sing out. And it has an absolutely beautiful, pure tone, and uh, it's what I love so much about the vibraphone. It's just, it's such a clean, pure, crystalline sound, but it's also, it can be very, very warm. I'm using rather soft mallets right now. These are Musser M8. Um, mallets. I also have uh, seven and six mallets. The six mallets are very, very hard and they make the vibraphone sound very, very bright, but these ones here sound absolutely pleasant. sounds great with all kinds of stuff. Uh, vibraphones have been used uh, extensively in jazz music and they sound really great for that. Their clean, pure tone really lends them themselves very well to doing uh, crunchy jazz chords and all kinds of cool stuff. And so of course the uh, vibraphone has a really, really big damper pedal down here which functions very much like a piano pedal but it's kind of like an oversized version of it and it's, uh, it's pretty fun. And you can actually customize the, uh, the uh, how it works and you can change how far down the, uh, the damper will go and how high off the, the floor of the damper pedal is. So you can make it really custom, unlike you can easily with a piano pedal. Now over here, the vibraphone has a really special feature and this is really what helps set it apart as well as the metal bars from the other members of this instrument family. And this is the, the vibrato or vibro part of the vibraphone. You have a power switch here and then you also have a speed dial here which goes all the way up to five and then you can also make it go all the way down, uh, way down there to zero. Uh, everything beyond this point is basically zero. So right here is one and it's basically the slow speed. You can really dial it down to go extremely slowly or you can just make it go really fast. Now I'm going to actually take off the uh, the diatonic set of bars here and show you what is going on underneath of the bars and it's really fascinating and organ um, people might know uh, what a Leslie is and it's a it's a speaker with a spinning cone on top that helps distribute the sound and in a way this is kind of similar because it does incorporate spinning parts to completely alter the sound and make it much much different from what the vibraphone is when that feature is turned off so let's go check that out right now the interesting feature about the vibraphone is the fact that it has these rotating metal circles, blades, tines, whatever you want to call them, inside of the resonator tubes. So when I turn on the vibraphone, you can see that this motor spins up, which then drives the uh, little 
metal spinning plates. And so there's also a set of them underneath here on the, uh, the sympathetic resonator tubes. There isn't a blade, but underneath of here, if I were to lift that up, I'm sure you can see them underneath. Let me move one over here and uh, show you that indeed there's one underneath of there. And so underneath of all of the alternate bars and underneath all of the sympathetic ones, there are these spinning plates. So what do these do exactly? I will show you. If I turn it off and I play a chord on the vibraphone, it sounds like that. Now if I turn on the, the vibro part, it sounds like that because essentially what's happening is the spinning plate is opening and closing the resonator tube, which is increasing and decreasing the volume of uh, amplification. And I can change the speed. Just like that, and it's a very cool feature of the vibraphone, and that is really what sets it apart from a marimba. Also, the uh, bars are made of metal rather than being made of wood. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video of the Musser M75 uh, vibraphone. It's a really, really cool instrument, and you're going to be seeing it a lot in my music. I'm really looking forward to how to use it, especially once I get down the technique of holding two mallets in one hand, because then I'd be able to play really cool chords. I can kind of do it right now, but I'm not, I'm not really using the proper technique. I really need to work on that, and uh, I have a basic idea of how it works, however. But once I get that down, I can really do cool chords and cool melody lines and all kinds of cool stuff on the vibraphone. You can really expect to see that coming out a lot in my music in the future. So if that sounds really cool to you, you might want to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.